There's something noble in the self that wants to be preserved in a way that is like, I'm still here. Last time we were talking, like in an in-depth matter, it was Medusa. Mm -hmm. And we were talking a lot about, you know, land yeah. and marble mm -hmm. and how marble, you know, carried the weight of history. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then now we're here uh, in your um, show with, se with, with self-portraits. Can you tell us um, how we got here from there? Yeah, actually, um, on the surface, it looks like a bit disparate or a bit kind of, um, you know, a huge jump from something as landscape and then self-portraits and then something from stark monochrome and to like blinding, yeah. you know, colors. Um, but if they're familiar, familiar with my trajectory, I started with self-portraits. And then throughout that I you know, started from a young artist and then um, eventually setting it out, out to the world in residencies, doing, you know, um, grants, fellowships. The, 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 the motivation before was I was looking a lot in the interior and then when I was doing that in different parts of the, of the world or in here, there's also a looking out in the external. And so, in fact, when my mentor saw my landscapes of volcanoes and the marble, and, and she told me, these are all self-portraits. It's just without you in them. She really, she really saw through it. Like, um, I agree with that. And in fact, there is this line from uh, a Deleuze and Gattari text that a landscape is nothing but a face of a beloved. You know, it becomes um, in the same way that we you know, approach a face. It's like coming back from where I began. So there's a full circle element to this exhibition being a self-portrait focused exhibition. Right. There's artists who would say they start with the concept mm -hmm. and then try to build on that. Maybe think of how to best illustrate the concept maybe mm -hmm. or how to best build on it and make it visual art. Yeah. And then you'd meet artists who say, um, they see the work first yeah. and then you know they they kind of like make their way back to what brought about that impulse mm -hmm. what's it like for you like how, how how do you work yeah for me um at this point with photography although my works have been associated with photography like from the onset people you know refer to me as a photographer i do work more of a more as an artist, not just because it's be not because it's better, but because it reflects what I do with a medium. Meaning, just you know, artist interprets things. You know, um, I do record because I still use the camera, but um, the the practice that I do is more really close to um, reinterpreting things. So I'm not documenting, but for the, these uh, tableaus, they're made in the studio. So they are very deliberate. They're made to uh, perform in front of the lens, and they're made to think of photography as well. So it's kind of a very reflexive way of using the medium because I know that I'm using photography, but I know that I'm also subverting photography in in in, in subtle ways by by using um, deliberate cuts and paste, like borrowing from collage, flattening the surface, um, yeah, and 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 then later on with the printing and the mounting so there's a technicality also so it still belongs to to photographic arts uh, my process is uh, i work from concept to to execution because i have to gather the materials i have to you know plan it uh, more in in terms of what i wanted to to to, to deliver in front of the lens I'm, I'm thinking of Medusa, mm -hmm. you know, and how, you know, as a show, you, you actually have quite a lot of things in it. You had the mm -hmm. durational paintings, you had the, mm -hmm. the, the sculpture. Mm -hmm. Was it like a conscious decision to do primarily a photography show? Mm -hmm. Which I'm asking because when you look at the photographs, there's so much stuff in them. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, if you were gonna make sculpture or if you were gonna make installation, mm -hmm. it's there already. But you know they're not here. Mm -hmm. um, what was it that a conscious mm -hmm. decision to kind of like just make it photos? Yes, I think you're right that um, there's always a mise en scène, meaning 
uh, a staging of some sort like the Medusa had physical installations in the gallery and there's this physicality when it comes to the marble dust on the big canvas although it looked very sparse because um, only a few pieces and such a big space in monochrome but for this one the idea is to present uh, everything as flat as I could flat meaning the photographic surface is not as 3D as people understand uh, with photography, right? So everything is like flattened to, to, to make it appear as if it was cut out, you know, something. But I like to play tricks. So you said there's no installation, but actually the framing right. is a huge part of it because these are artist frames that I also orchestrated to, to, to um, go after when the image is printed and then, you know, encase it in another layer of object mess you know there's an object um, about this and there's also scale because and to speak about the elements in the in the, um, in the photographs so yes the, there are a lot of objects in fact uh, this is a show I think um, I really wanted to really show the baroqueness of things like putting things together like to the max like put it on extra <laughs> as much as possible um, every space with something in it so uh, this is the f uh, part that I I think for photography meaning photography for the camera the deliberateness of the objects being there plus the artist that works on different levels from as a laborer as a you know production technician of course me I did, did the, the lighting design and also camera work and then as a labor of uh, sourcing the objects mm -hmm. carrying the objects you know all of that so I traversed the process although alone everything was done alone um, and in, in, in the end also the actor and then in the end like a magician you know like just putting things together I think like, as a you know as a body of work would you call it like a variation on a theme? And if yes, like I'm, I, uh, I want to know like how you decided what the theme was mm -hmm. and how to variate from it. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, no. Yes, majority of these are new from 2019. Um, I've worked on the idea of tropical gothic, which I'll explain a bit later. And some of these were excerpted from my. Um, works from years ago just because um, there are specific um, markers in my time as a uh, I'm counting like about more than 12 shows in the gallery uh, uh, yeah so so th um, the purpose of self portraits for me also was a marker even if I was doing like uh, very sparse um, work including a lot of landscapes I would punctuate it with a self portrait here and there when there's something that's going on with my life and I would use art to, to um, record it in a way that is like a place marker like this is when it happened and this is what I thought during that time so very sparse like one in 2012 after I lost everything um, my, my work I lost and then one after the fire one after dengue one after you know like specific life markers but always as a part of a kind of a running, you know, exploration, you know, I think. But for 2019, um, the variations on a theme were this, I uh, was ruminating on tropical gothic. Let's talk about the grand tradition of the self-portrait. <laughs> you know, like, uh, <laughs> okay. I feel like we cannot not talk about this here. Yes. It's tough to answer because right now we're in the world of selfies, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, people who would come to see the show, it's like, it's a selfie show, right? <laughs> um, uh, which is another topic altogether, we could dissect that, and I'm not offended at all, but also there's a lot <laughs> lost in the, in the, in the um, yeah, assumption. But yeah, self-portraits have been a part of um, my practice, even if, you know, before even I figured out I was an artist. So I was studying communication arts in La Salle, 
which was not an art degree per se, but my mentor was Judy Sibayan, and she's really uh, you know, important in conceptual art in, in the Philippines. So my training was more of a, like a, as an artist. Yeah, she, she made us see in a way that is um, beyond the surface. So um, our exercises for lighting and camera work, that was the first real um, time that I actually explored self-portraits because at that time I was living uh, with my parents and our house was beside Laguna Lake and there were no neighbors and I was the only you know, willing participant to my experiments, you know, so it was right. in this uh, in this milieu and so there was just that, like, you know, empty lots and I would uh, put the camera on a tripod and I would be there, you know, like just just very, um, um, you know, trying to be physical in front of the camera and trying to expose the vulnerabilities all, and this, at the same time some poetic, you know, um, possibilities with there. Uh, it's, it's really strange because to me, to be authentic in photographs, there's a layer of fiction that goes on whether or not these were real, you know? So it's like a sincere, um, uh, how do you say, like sincere, not fiction, but sincere re 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 retelling, you know? It's like a reimagining of something or of, 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 uh, of thoughts that I, that I had. Photography is one of those um, unique practices where com maybe compared to other forms of art making, you can engage with the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking of the, uh, the artist who makes spots and labors mm -hmm. in his studio and you know, um, the, the art starts and ends there. Mm -hmm. And I think in comparison, you know, photography is one of those, as I said, unique practices where you can go out and engage with the world. And I think mm -hmm. This is something you. Th this is something you do, right? Um, you you have work that engages with the world in in that sense, and mm -hmm. then there's this other pole where you are alone. Mm -hmm. You're making um, self portraits, and mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you're the only subject you can approach. Like you were, when you were starting out, like you were saying. Yeah. So, yeah. are those two separate disciplines, or? Mm -hmm. um, how, do you, do you see them as um, opposites or? I don't think they're opposites, but it's a process that uh, I go through each time. It's like an inhalation and exhalation, you know, yeah. it's just part of the same thing, but different stages. Like these self portraits are all studio um, done. Uh, I've, I came back uh, to my studio practice just late last year after the fire I had no studio for almost two two or three years and then when I finally had the studio so it was like you know such a big uh, privilege that I could do this again in my own time in my own space but to engage with the world what happens at a daily scale at a daily um, you know there's a part of me that likes to observe things you know uh, in the streets I look at the, the houses, the architecture, the colors. I when I attend the fiestas, my parents took me to Leyte and I and looked at the materials that was in, in the this place of how they created the the decorations. I bring all of these in the studio alone and then trying to let's just say write a song about it. In, their, in, in, in the form of photographs. So I would write uh, what's going to write and, and, and draw or what's going to be in it or then this one could be that, you know, it, it's like recalling to mind different elements, not, not, not necessarily recording them as it is or recreating it exactly as it is, um, but yeah, calling to mind all of that. Like it's like I'm calling the past, I'm calling things that I know now, you know, uh, a memory or uh, a conversation with a friend, you know, like all of these, I'm just, I'm just gathering them and then in the studio, there's where the magic happens. So there's still, I think it's a very, could be a very uh, solitary process, but it has a lot of, it's dense with, um, how do you say, 
everybody is there, you know. Yeah. I'm alone, but everybody and everywhere is there in, in, in that in that moment. You you talk about like the Filipino experience as this mishmash of yeah um, of things, you know, yeah. of uh, yeah. of uh, uh, like like a soup of of like yeah. opposites, <laughs> like, you know, this kind of like bubbling thing where there's no thesis inside it almost. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this almost chaotic uh, richness it's, mm -hmm. it's you know what informs your work. But what I find um, what I'm curious about curious about maybe is like the movement from that that um, chaos, mm -hmm. whether organized or not, to eventually organizing it into mm -hmm. a framed image, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a meticulous tableau, uh, very formally posed. Mm -hmm. um, almost organized in such a way that is visually mm -hmm. um, captivating. Mm -hmm. what, what, what for you? What happens in that movement? Like, because for me, there's they're they're very different, right? I mean, you almost have this thing and then this other thing. I mean, what happens in the middle for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I like your observation <laughs> because I think there's a huge part of my art making that is trying to single out one thing or only a few things and I pay attention to it super closely and then it looks you know um, and, and, and I make it so I intervene so that it's something that is um, a feast when you look at it like the same thing as I did for with the plants and the weeds of the city I singled it out and then you know people could talk about it and open conversations and other bigger things so in here there's a lot of, uh, I like the word to organize it because I think the mishmash, we could be overwhelmed and it was, it's our life story, you know, living in Manila, we're overwhelmed with, um, first of all, the traffic, we're overwhelmed with the weather, the heat, the, you know, all of these things. So when it comes to making uh, the deliberate images, I would, I would pick certain things and then make it so that it has uh, a space to, to be seen in a way that uh, the overwhelm would be a nice kind of overwhelm, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I don't like to use the word nice, but it's yeah. like an overwhelm that is, uh, you know, like a, an alternative to, to, to how is interpreting our experience because sometimes, okay, overwhelm is like too much, but then too much could also be, you know, rich, you know? Like, uh, we were talking about less is more, but <laughs> now it seems like, you know, instead of like being yeah. to fight with the tendency to, to, to be extra, you know, like we're from here, we're from the Philippines, we're always going to have that extra, so we might as well like embrace that and, and then uh, use it in a way that it could open up an understanding of that which we didn't like or understand before, yeah. What do you see is the artist's role, mm -hmm. and did, has this changed for you? How has this changed for you when you began um, began making art, began doing photography um, throughout all the um, projects, mm -hmm. exhibitions you've done? Mm -hmm. um, has your role as an artist been constant, or how much mm -hmm. has it changed? And um, yeah. Yeah, I'm reminded by the question before that you've asked, which I didn't know if I answered, but the long tradition of self-portraiture, because it makes me it makes me humble and also proud that there is a lineage of human beings whose uh, life has been spent on reflection. You know, so I think uh, a lot of uh, being an artist is to reflect, um, to question or to reflect. And in a lifetime, because in the end, you know, art is long, life is short. Uh, there is there is a person that lives through it all, you know. And in my and in my art, and in my self portraits, I would think like, you know, maybe these are ways of, of reaffirming uh, a life that has, you know, lived. And, and I guess this it, it's so big to say this, but there's something noble in the self that wants to be preserved in a way that is like, I'm still here, you know? 
like the fire happened and I'm still here. Uh, I was in the hospital and about to die, I'm still here. You know, I was lost and then felt I was displaced and, and I lost everything in one fell swoop. I'm still here. So it's like these kind of markers and you know, throughout it all, like uh, we have ranges of emotions that you know could go from the really really dark to the really really how do you call it enlightened and bright so in specific moments there's a, a moment to record that or to contemplate on that as all the rest of the artist has done and to me that's um, a way that we kind of pause and reflect and then because as an artist, the, the, the only way we can be authentic is to reflect from ourselves. You know, like uh, external experiences that happen, the politics happening around us, the society, the times that have you know, changed, the, the worldviews that have changed, and all through all of these gets filtered through the, the person. So it's a privilege to be able to stop and think about that and then maybe later on leave that aside and then do other things. But it's essential to always have that moment.